We are now going to talk about situations where there's a deemed supply if you cease to be a VAT vendor. Now, what does this mean? What does ceasing to be a VAT vendor mean? Ceasing to be a VAT vendor means you, for some reason, are no longer registered as a VAT vendor. Now, think about registering as a VAT vendor. When do you register as a VAT vendor? You have to register as a VAT vendor if your supplies are more than a million rands each year. You can choose to be a VAT vendor if your supplies are 50,000. So let's quickly say this. So compulsory million optional 50,000. Okay, so let me give you an idea of what this section is about. Let's say that I have a turnover my st of 800,000 rands. X fat. That means it is less than a million rands, so it's not compulsory for me to do it, but it's more than a 50,000, so I can choose to do so. So I choose to register. Okay, so I choose to register as a VAT vendor. Now I'm going to buy a machine, and the machine has a cost of 115,000, including VAT. So I claim the input tax of 15,000 rands on that. Then tomorrow, after I've done all of this, I, just, I go to SARS and I say, listen, my turnover is only 800,000. It's not a million rands. So I'm choosing now to deregister as a VAT vendor. So what happened then? I claimed input VAT. And now I'm no longer a vendor, so I'm not going to charge out with that. So can you see that would be a problem for SARS? Okay, so one of the other situations where you cease to be a vendor, if you choose to deregister, your business closes, any situation or where you go and you maybe emigrate, your business emigrates, so any situation where you go from being a vendor to not a vendor, there's a deemed supplier. So what do you think after this example I used where I say to you, you choose to voluntarily register, you claim your input VAT and then you deregister. What do you think this section is going to do? This section is going to tell you you will be treated as if you sold all of your assets at their market value. So you have to raise output VAT. So I claim input VAT, I choose to register, and I claim input VAT. Tomorrow I deregister, SARS will say, right, charge output VAT on that machine that you've then purchased. So they can draw and recover their input VAT. So section 82 is the section that tells you. If you cease to be a VAT vendor, so you're no longer a VAT vendor, you are treated as if you made a deemed supply. Okay, again, always reminding you, section 71A, you must calculate output tax if there is a supply, goods, by a vendor, or services in the furtherance of an enterprise. So, section, if you cease to be a vendor, section 82 tells you yes, this is apply, and it will be treated as if it's in the furtherance of the enterprise. They'll treat it as if it's goods and if you're a vendor. So, you can see you will have to calculate output tax if it meets those requirements. So, when a person ceases to be a vendor, they are deemed to be goods are deemed to be supplied immediately before you cease to be a vendor. So you'll calculate output tax. The, all of the old rules so far applies. It excludes things like motor cars and entertainment because input value would have been denied. So, guys, remember, well, you have to look at the definition, timing, value, and special rules. The timing rule says in section 9.5, you calculate it immediately before you cease to be a vendor. So the day before. The value says you calculate on the lower of the cost, including VAT, or the open market value. And remember, open market value is the market value, including VAT. Right, so again, guys, that's it. So all of your assets, you will do this calculation for. That times 15 over 115%. Or 15 over 115, sorry. Now, there's a couple of other factors that you have to consider here. First thing is creditors. Now, guys, if I go and buy X Limited buys goods for 115,000, including VAT, from Creditor X, 
on 1 January pays creditor X on 1 November. So you buy goods on 1 Jan, you pay it on, claim it on 1 November. So when do we claim the input tax? You claim it as soon as you have the invoice. Invoice is early of invoice or payment. So on the 1st of Jan, we will claim the input tax. Can you see? Okay, now, what happens if I was a VAT vendor on the 1st of Jan, and then I ceased to be a vendor on 1 March. So before I've paid it, so I had to pay this person on the 1st of November, before I paid it on the 1st of March, I ceased to be a vendor. Can you see what would be the issue for SARS? The issue for SARS is I would have claimed it on the 1st of Jan, but I only paid in November. So at the time when I've stopped being a VAT vendor, I haven't even paid it yet, but I've claimed the input VAT already. So, they tell you, proviso II to section 22.3 says, if there are any unpaid creditors, and they will always be unpaid, obviously, otherwise they're not a creditor, but if there are, no, if there are unpaid creditors at a time that the vendor ceases to be a vendor, then output tax must be raised equal to the VAT on the outstanding creditors. In other words, you have to calculate, return the VAT. So all of the input VAT you claimed, you must raise that as output VAT. But important, this only applies to creditors who are not older than 12 months. If the creditors are older than 12 months, you will look at section 22.3, just section 22.3. Section 22.3 says, if your credit is older than 12 months, you must raise an amount of output tax equal to the VAT that was raised on the moment that it was more than 12 months. You'll see we'll discuss this separately. I want you to understand here in this. In both situations, output tax is raised. It is just the section number that is different. And what do I mean by that? Section 22.3, just section 22.3 tells you if your creditors are older than 12 months, you have to raise output VAT. The proviso. 2 to section 22.3 tells you that if it is deemed, uh, if you cease to be a vendor, you must pay it out the tax. So they're both in section 22.3. The one is just section 22.3 and the other one is the proviso. Alright, so here's that one I just spoke of. If you bought goods from a creditor and you haven't paid them within 12 months, then you must raise output tax. So basically, if I buy goods on the 1st of January 2018 and by the 1st of January 2019 I have not paid it, then the act says you must raise output VAT. So the idea here is, remember creditors, I claim input VAT. So SARS is worried that I claim input VAT here and then I just never paid a creditor. Because then I claim input VAT but I haven't paid. So they say, we'll give you 12 months to pay. If you haven't, then you must raise output VAT. If you then at a later stage do end up paying them, then you can claim it back as input tax. Right, then Section 827 and Section 1026. So 827 is a deem supply section. I'm talking about it now, just here, because we can also sometimes see it ceasing to be a vendor, although it's not limited to ceasing to be a vendor. This applies on its own. This section says, if you raise output VAT, so you sell something to someone, and they pay you too much, then you have to refund them and if you have not done it in four months, then you must pay output tax on the amount that they pay too much. Now, let me explain to you the reason for that. So here's an example. A Limited is, regis is a registered vendor and has a monthly VAT period. So it does VAT every month. A Limited sold goods for $1,150 on the 1st of February. Okay, now, the normal timing rule says... You account for VAT on the earlier of invoice or payment. These goods were sold on the 1st of February. So that's when the invoice was given. Right? The client paid 2150 on the 1st of March. Okay. So what would you use here? You would use the invoice. So how much would your output to tax be? The output tax would be calculated on whatever was invoiced, which is the 1150. 
1150. Okay, now important here. So on the 1st of Feb, pay output tax of 150. See now what happens. On the 1st of March, this person pays us 2150. We only sold it for 1150, but they're paying us 2150. Why? Well, who knows? Maybe they made a mistake. They mistyped it in the EFT payment. Now, can you see there's a thousand rands which they pay too much? That thousand rands, I must pay that on if I have not refunded it within four months. So, on the 1st of February, I account for the output VAT. On the 1st of March, when they pay me, I don't do anything. Now I've got four months, so March, April, May, and the whole of June. At the end of June, if I haven't paid it, that thousand rands that they paid me too much, I must then calculate the output VAT on it. Can you see why this exists, guys? Because you would have raised your VAT on the 1,150, but they paid you 2,150. This is also just a way to make sure that there's nothing dodgy going on where you try and where a person pays you more in order to avoid VAT. So they say, listen, don't charge me VAT on the full 2,000, just charge on the 1,000. Right, this is to stop that from happening. And then, section 22, bad debts. This is not a deems applied, this is just about bad debts. Basically, it says that if you sell something to someone, you raise output VAT. If that person doesn't pay you, if it becomes a bad debt, then you can claim that output VAT back as input VAT. So, guys, if I, if I sell something to someone at 15%, so I sell something for 1,000 rands, and the VAT on that is 150, and I, it becomes a bad date, I'll claim the 150 rands back. If I export something to someone, that is raised at null, so null. If that becomes a bad date, I can claim back the null. If it was exempt, so residential accommodation, it's still exempt. So whatever you claim, whatever you raise out of that, you claim that back as input VAT.